Hi, my name is Bettina from Bettina's Kitchen and this is actually my kitchen, for real. Welcome to Bettina's Kitchen and let me show you around. Here are my cupboards. There's my rice cooker. Everybody should have a rice cooker. This is one of my favourite meals. Mmm, that's really good. We're going to be making a bread mixture that is gluten-free and yeast-free and we're going to be making three things out of this. A pizza base, a bread loaf and some pancakes. Sounds unbelievable but trust me it's possible. We've got some ground flour. Ground flour is another word for chickpea flour. I'm now going to add in the gluten-free flour mix and you can buy these in any supermarket now. It's a really quick bread recipe. You basically bang everything into a big bowl, mix it together, and then it's kind of done. What's really, really important is the actual consistency of this bread. I'm gonna use a tiny bit of bicarbonate of soda, and the bicarbonate of soda is what makes this bread rise, but within the combination of using bicarbonate of soda, pinch of salt, and apple water. So the mixture needs something sweet so the magic and sort of chemical reaction happens and so that you don't get this typical gluten-free, gloopy, really heavy bread. So the bicarb, the salt and the apple water, where the sweetness comes from, is what's going to make this bread rise basically. I'm not using apple for the taste, I'm using it for the sweetness so that the sweetness reacts with the salt, the salt reacts with the bicarb and you get this amazing fluffy gluten-free bread. So it's really important that the sweetness gets mixed in with the water. So we've got our apple water mixture. Sort of forget everything that you know about traditional baking bread. It's like a savoury cake batter that's going to be turned into bread. As you can see, I'm using lots of liquid. And one of the comments I mostly get is, oh my god, this mixture is too liquidy. Trust me, it's supposed to be. So, we are going to do the pizza base first. I've got this little oven tray. Um, I use greaseproof baking paper. And again, it's a completely non-traditional pizza base. Forget everything that you know about traditional pizza bases. This mixture is quite runny and it's like a cake batter. I'm going to add a layer of pizza base. This is invaluable. If you don't have one of these, spatulas, spatula. Get one. I'm just going to make it sort of even Stevens. Right, this goes in, 180 degrees. We're going to leave it there for 10 minutes to solidify. Okay, so we're going to do our second thing with this mixture and that's going to be a bread loaf. So we're going to add this mixture to another bowl and we're going to leave a little bit here just so that I can demo that you can actually make a pancake out of this as well. We're going to flavour it with different things I'll show you. Some sesame seeds, black seeds, and I've got this mixture of leftover nuts, all the little bits and bobs that you've got left over in your store cupboard. Lots of little bags everywhere, I do. Um, so I've just put them all in here and I'm gonna put them into the bread loaf. Give this a mix. So remember, gluten-free and yeast-free, double whammy. We're gonna add, oh, here we go. So I've also got spice mix. So this is zahatar, which is just a mixture of different spices and you toast them. We're going to put that on the top of the loaf. Yum. I'm using a silicone mold, also using um, baking paper. It's just a habit. I kind of like to use both just to make sure that my bread loaf comes out of the tin properly. This is done. The top solidified. Right, in this goes, 180 degrees, 45 minutes. So here we've got our pizza base. As you can see, it's solidified. You could stick this in the freezer and you can do a couple of these, stick them in the freezer and then take them out as and when you want. Or peel off the layer, push it back. And we've got the crispy bit underneath, which we'll put face down. We'll do a little bit of a fridge raid and see what we've got. So we've got some leftover pesto, teeny tiny bag of leftover kale, got some tomatoes, a tomato, and we've got some courgettes. Maybe put some chili on for flavour. I've got some leftover onion as well, so I've just chopped one little half. 
kind of chop this guy up. So we're gonna add all the veggies into the bowl. A little bit of olive oil. Give that a bit of a whiz. Separate those guys. Oregano. Whack that in. Leftover pesto. This is my pumpkin seed pesto from my first book, Happy Food. So if you want the recipe for this, you can Google it. Happy Food, pumpkin seed pesto, and you'll find the recipe. But it's basically pumpkin seeds, olive oil, basil, garlic, salt and pepper. So it's nut free as well, double whammy. Yeast free, gluten free, nut free, bread. It's like three, three wins in one. You can call this pizza or you can call it flatbread with lots of veggies on top. And it goes into the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes on 180 degrees. Right, so I forgot to put some salt in. On, on, not in, but on. There we go. And we're going to put it into the oven. Oh, this. Doesn't that look amazing? Here we go. Goes in. So this is why I like using the silicone mold, but this is why I like using the paper, because you can literally just lift it out. Yeast free. Gluten free. Toast these babies. You can slice it up, stick it in a plastic bag and freeze it and use it as and when you want to. This bit with all the nuts here, it's so delicious when it's toasted. Imagine that with some peanut butter or some sliced tomatoes, some olive oil, or some hummus. Really easy, chop all of this loaf up, stick it in the freezer and it'll last for at least a month or two. Such a good waste not tip. And you won't have stale bread, which is one of the biggest things that um, goes to waste. Look at that. That's amazing. There we go. I've got some leftover plant-based cheese. I'm gonna just top it off. Nice and crispy on the bottom. You can call it pizza, you can call it a fancy flatbread. Basically, you've used all your leftovers and your wonky sad veg that have been lying around in the fridge. And you've created something really nice. I'm gonna try some of this. Ah, still super hot. Mmm, this is so good. Crispy, nice, lots of veggies on top. So good, gotta try this at home. Yum. Super quick and easy to make, that literally took I don't know, 30 minutes from start to finish. Whatever leftovers you've got in the fridge, super easy, quick and fuss free and doesn't cost a lot of money. And you're utilizing all your leftovers. I mean, that's a win-win. Okay guys, so we're down to our third and final thing that we can make with this mixture. I'm going to add some cinnamon. I'm gonna add some baking powder. I want the pancakes to fluff up and be sort of American style fluffy, fluffy pancakes. You can add turmeric, you can add cacao, you can add anything you like spice-wise. You can add some cardamom, some clove. Coconut oil, particle pancakes. Beautiful. So remember that little squidgy, sad apple that we had? Great way of using leftovers. If you really want to pimp them out, be a bit naughty and you can add some coconut sugar or brown sugar. A wee bit of brown sugar to caramelise them. You can put other things on like bananas, these sad berries that you've got lying in the fridge. That smells so good already. So here we've got apple pancakes. The only thing that we've added to that original bread mix is a tiny bit of baking powder to make the mixture rise and you can use any sort of leftover fruits but we've used apple here we're just going to dollop over flavored yogurt salted caramel yogurt to be precise and almonds and it's done gluten free yeast free one mixture where you can make three things mm. really good <laughs> these are what you would call american style pancakes so filling fluffy and quite thick in texture. So you only need sort of a couple and it will pull you up. So those are the three things that you can make with this bread mixture, which is gluten-free and yeast-free and utilizing all your sort of sad vegetables that you've got lying around in your fridge. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. 
so that we can create amazing content that will benefit you. If you like what we're doing, click like, subscribe, and see you next time.